Hey guys, working in the garage today on the Terex PT30 track loader. The job we're doing today is replacing the injectors. At low RPMs and mid RPMs, under any load it would knock. Um, it seemed to go away when you were full throttle, but uh, any low RPMs and sometimes just idling around low RPMs, it had a pretty good fuel knock. Um, so what I did was I bought some injectors on eBay. It was $109 for three of them, and two out of three of them leaked. I went and got the OEM injectors rebuilt at a local shop here, and they said they were not atomizing the fuel correctly, so they had to buy some new cups for them, and they had to take them apart. That was $238 for the three of them. And the OEM injectors, I think they were close to $300 a piece. This is a Perkins 403D15 engine, which is the three-cylinder diesel. So let's get started. As you can see, I've got the hood removed. So next, I've got this air cleaner assembly that's gonna come off. I think they're three eighths inch uh, bolts that have a half inch head on them. Next, there's three half inch bolts that hold this bracket in place. Now from here, you've got pretty good access to the hard lines. Um, you might need to move a couple of these rubber lines out of the way, whatever. I loosen all three of these up here and just using, uh, that's an 11 16 Then once all those are loosened, you can start by loosening this one and then this hose will move out of the way a little bit and you can get a wrench on the second one and then both will move out of the way and you can get a wrench on the third one. Now when you're turning these, you want to make sure that the um, item that it's screwed to does not spin as well. So when you look down here, you'll see you need to loosen this, but you also need to put a wrench on this so that this piece doesn't spin out of the fuel pump. Same with up here. You'll want to put a wrench on this section right here, which is the upper portion of the injector. So that's what you'll put a wrench on to keep from spinning when you remove this top and when you remove this nut. The return line also has a rubber hose at the end of it right here that the fuel goes and returns back to the tank so um, I didn't find that needed to be removed once I remove it from here and the three injectors this hose can be moved out of the way with that rubber line back there still intact Remove the return line nut. I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket and again the three quarters to hold the body. Last, I've got a 10 millimeter here to remove the return line at the fuel pump. Slide everything off at once. and you can place that out of the way. Now to remove the injector, I'm using a 22 millimeter socket. I'm gonna get them all loose before I remove them all. Now make sure when you pull these out, there's also a copper washer at the bottom of the injector here. Sometimes you need to reach in there and pull it out with a pick or suck it out with a vacuum. So the next thing I'm gonna do for these injectors to prep them a little bit is I wanna leave them capped and everything as much as possible. But when I go to install them, to hold that copper washer on there, you can see it's loose. I use just a dab of Vaseline, just a tiny little dab on one side, just to make that stick to it. I also use 
a little bit of Permatex anti-seize lubricant on the threads just just to touch on those threads so that when they thread into the block it goes nice and smooth and if they ever need to come back out you know we don't have any issues see here just a tiny little dab like that we'll make that stick to the injector You can see there how that copper washer stays on just like it needs to. I think it calls for 70 foot pounds, but don't quote me on that. Okay, the next step is to reinstall the fuel return line. And you want to make sure not to get any debris inside the injector there, so make sure your hands are clean and everything is good before you spin these off. And I'll take off one of these washers to show that they have two holes in them that's what they're supposed to have that way the return fuel that comes back through the injector goes through those two holes into these grooves in the rail and get returned back into this line here so i'm also going to remove this banjo bolt that we need to and this whole assembly sets in place that. Get the banjo bolt back in. And I start with the one we removed last. Now I'll show how I go about uh, priming the engine here. Mine has this squeeze ball. I just kind of squeeze that a few times. Now generally I'll pump it a few more times. Okay, well I call that a success. Nothing leaks, and I just had the engine at pretty low RPMs and was able to use the bucket to lift the front of the machine off the ground, and all is well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the hood slapped back on here and call this fixed.